welcome back to part four of cardiac dysrhythmias. Have you ever heard the saying, if R is far from P, then you have a first degree. Longer, longer, longer drop, then you have a wonky buck. If some P's don't get through, then you have a Mobit too. If P's and Q's don't agree, then you have a third degree. Maybe you heard it in one of my other videos when I sang cardiac rhythms for you guys. I know, beautiful voice. But that is what we are talking about today. We are talking about first, second, and third degree heart blocks. So let's jump to it and start with our first degree heart block. Remember back in the very beginning on that first EKG video I posted and I posted the PR interval and how long that should be? Well, that's what you need to know for this video. So let's start with the first degree heart block. So a first degree heart block is when the PR interval is longer than 0 0.20. The electrical conduction of the heart is slowed down in the first degree heart block. What's causing the slowing of the PR interval? Well, some causes could be AV node disturbance, an increased vagal tone, it could be an electrolyte imbalance, an MI, aka a heart attack, or even some medications. It's so hard to remember the symptoms because there are none. Literally, it's not hard. There are no symptoms of a first degree AV block or a first degree heart block. And typically there is no treatment for a first degree heart block. So now let's move on to second degree heart blocks. This is where it's going to get a little bit more tricky, a little bit more in depth. So make sure you are taking notes for this. So let's start with the major difference between a type 1 secondary heart block and a type 2 secondary heart block. So in type 1 second degree heart block, also known as MOBIT1, which we don't call it that anymore, but you might have heard that, that is when the PR interval progressively lengthens until an impulse is blocked. Now in a second degree heart block type 2, also called a MOBIT2, which you should not hear it being called that anymore, but if you do, that's what we're talking about. That is when the PR interval is constant. It is prolonged, but it's constant at the same rate until another impulse is blocked. Now there is a third type of second degree heart block, and that's a two to one. You'll hear it be called the two to one ratio. Now this occurs when every other P wave is not conducted through the AV node, which then shows us that every other P wave is not followed by a QRS complex. Take a look at these tele strips and see the difference between the three different types of second degree heart blocks. Now causes of your second degree heart block type one or Mobitz one would be the same as your first degree heart block. That inferior MI, increased vagal tone. Some medications can cause this heart block though, which would be like your amiodarone, your calcium channel blockers, and your beta blockers. And causes for Mobitz 2 is the exact same as Mobitz 1, or your first degree heart block type 2, or your second degree heart block type 2. And your 2 to 1 ratio of your second degree heart block is the same as the first two that I just said. So all three types of your second degree heart block have the same causes. And all your symptoms are also going to be the same for all your type two AV blocks. That will be your lightheadedness, your dizziness, a syncopal episode, chest pain, or even a regularly irregular heart rate. And the most common treatment for your second degree heart blocks is a pacemaker whether that be on the outside of your body or placed on the inside of your body. And let's head into our last heart block, which is our third degree heart block, which is a complete heart block. That is when the electrical impulses from the upper and the lower part of the heart are not matching up at all. This will be most common in your patients with heart disease. Your symptoms will also be that lightheadedness, that dizziness, that chest pain a syncopal episode, and a very slow heartbeat, also called bradycardia. And if you have a third degree heart block, uh, this requires transcutaneous pacing. And remember, transcutaneous pacing is placed on the outside of the patient's body. So that is sending electrical impulses from the outside to the inside to have that heart beat and contract. And take a look at this tele strip for your third degree heart block. Remember the song, if the P's and Q's don't agree, then you have a third degree. Way to bear with me on this one, guys. I know that was a lot of information about heart blocks. I hope you took some good notes about this stuff because this is so important to know in nursing. 
especially if you're working on a cardiac floor in the emergency ICU, even on a medical floor to prevent your patients from declining. Other than that, guys, I will see you in the last series to this cardiac dysrhythmia videos in one more day. Last one coming up. You guys are doing awesome. Have a blessed day, and I will see you in two days for the last video.